Hello and welcome to this brief webinar on balancing synchronous and asynchronous activities in online learning. The purpose of this video is to introduce you to our team of instructional designers who will share concrete ideas and examples of how to increase asynchronous activities in your online course. Many of you have tried some of the activities and strategies that we'll discuss in this video today. However, we do hope that you take away perhaps one or two ideas that may help you as you continue your journey in online instruction. During the pandemic, many of you took your courses online by using tools like Zoom or WebEx, allowing you to meet in real time with your students. There are advantages to this approach, but we also heard from many of you that this format of teaching can be quite challenging. Audio and video problems, can disrupt a live session. Students may not feel comfortable asking questions in this format, and so it could be difficult to know what topics they're struggling with. Meeting at a fixed time is also limiting. Fortunately, online education gives us an opportunity to step back and to think about class time and class space in a different way. In the graduate school, our online courses operate in modules that last one week. Within that week, there are due dates. But beyond that, students can engage with the content at times that are convenient for them. So, what does this look like? Well, students might watch a pre-recorded lecture or a series of presentations that have been uploaded to the course site ahead of time. These might be supplemented by outside resources that you curate, such as journal articles, outside videos, websites, that kind of thing. Once these are posted, students work through the materials at their own pace. Then you can create the activities and assignments that help you see right away who understands the concepts and who might need more help. A discussion post asking students to reflect on the concepts can reveal the depth of student understanding. Some assignments like objective quizzes in the learning management system can be automatically graded, giving students and you feedback without requiring a lot of extra grading time. Your approach doesn't have to be either or. You can mix real-time and non-real-time events and make the most out of each format. The next part of this video will help you imagine ways that you can engage with your students in non-real-time, or what we call asynchronous instruction. Many of you report feeling less connected to your students when teaching online. Losing that face-to-face -face interaction is a big change. Online courses can be just as engaging as traditional courses, but the kinds of activities to create that sense of connection might look different. I'd like to share with you a few key principles that go a long way in fostering engagement, and they are instructor presence, timely feedback, and low-tech communication. So how do you create a feeling of instructor presence in online courses? For starters, you can think about your course in terms of one-way and two-way interactions. You know, one-way interactions do not necessarily require an exchange between you and your students. For example, posting an announcement, sharing a relevant article or news story, or providing updates on the course schedule communicate your presence as the information is being pushed with no expectation of a response. You know, Two-way interactions, on the other hand, are built with an expectation that some form of response will take place. Two prime examples are assignments and the discussion board. In the discussion board, you or your students pose a question or a prompt and others respond. In an assignment, students complete a task that you determine measures their learning and you provide feedback on their work. Your feedback lets students know if they're on track or if they need extra support and it lets you know how the course materials and activities are contributing to their learning. And timely feedback is always encouraged. Feedback is one of the most important components of a successful online course and one of the most frequently raised topics on course evaluations. Finally, we recommend the use of low-tech, high-touch technology. Think text messages, for example. Very low-tech with the potential for a very high-touch personal feel. Now, there are a ton of third-party technologies for online education. Uh, don't be overwhelmed or intimidated. Rather, embrace what you know and go from there. You know, our advice is to really just focus on the tools in the learning management system, such as Blackboard. These tools include announcements, the discussion board, 
quizzing tool, course assignments. You know, each of these tools allow faculty and students to engage in critical discourse asynchronously. You know, and the discussion board in particular has the potential to serve as a place for active learning where students start to see themselves as members of a community of learners. Now we're happy to meet with you to brainstorm ways to make the most of all of these tools, but the key takeaways of online engagement are being present, providing timely feedback, and keep it low-tech, simple communication. The next part of this video will help you explore ways that you can organize your course for consistency and quality. Another frustration we hear from faculty making the transition to online teaching has to do with the time they spend answering student questions about technology or where things are on the course site. When we work with faculty, our goal is to help make the technology disappear so students and faculty spend time engaging with the content. A well-organized course can be the difference between a satisfying, productive learning experience and one that's needlessly frustrating for you and your students. The key to a well-organized course is a clear and consistent structure. Two common approaches are to organize the course either by unit topics or by types of activities such as assignments, discussions, and quizzes. Typically, our center recommends a structure designed around weekly units. Each unit focuses on a specific academic topic and looks similar to the other units, especially in the way students navigate among and within units. Once you've settled on the general structure, consider including other essential components into your course. Here are four suggestions that will reduce student confusion and questions to you. First, provide a well-organized syllabus in a prominent location with easy access to instructor contact information, the topic schedule, due dates, and the course grading scheme. Students also appreciate having a sense of each unit's learning outcomes. What should they be able to do once the unit's complete? Second, create a space that orients students to your course structure. Provide an obvious starting point, like a module titled Start Here. This module could include an introduction to the course and to the instructor, navigation tips, links for technology support, and an open discussion forum for Q&A or general communication among class members. Third, provide clear instructions for each assignment. In a classroom setting, you give assignment instructions and clarifications to the whole class with an announcement. Use that same process online. Clear expectations and specific instructions for each assignment, length, due dates, formats, how to submit, will help reduce the number of questions you receive. Finally, consider including a brief evaluation so students can give you constructive feedback about the course. It's a great way to improve your course incrementally over time. We hope you find these tips useful, and as always, if you have questions or want to work with a designer, feel free to reach out to us at the Faculty Center for Teaching and Learning.